Empire. Welcome to Inside the Cap. I'm your host, Joel Corey. You can find me on Twitter at Corey Joel. That is C-O-R-R-Y-J-O-E-L. And I have a regular column called Agents Take at CBSSports.com on the business of the NFL, focusing primarily on NFL contracts and the salary cap. Uh, This week, we're going to talk about what to expect um, for the remainder of the trading period. The trading deadline is on Tuesday, um, November 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We've seen that there have been a couple of trades so far. Uh, mostly there's been a run on edge rushers, defensive ends. Um, Yannick Ngakwe uh, goes from Minnesota to Baltimore for a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick. Carlos Dunlap uh, really wanted out of Cincinnati and took to social media to campaign his way out of town, got his wish. He's now a Seattle Seahawk, uh, traded for B.J. Finney, a seventh-round pick. Um, Dallas gave up on Everson Griffin, uh, sent him to the Lions for a conditional sixth-round pick. Marcus Golden um, returns to Arizona, where he started his career. Giants traded him for a 2021 sixth-round pick. Um, one thing you're going to see this year is guys who were traded – uh, before the deadline, after this week's games, um, won't be suiting up next Sunday because of the COVID-19 protocols. You're going to have to pass, I think, five tests um, in order to be able to play. So that's going to take you out of playing in week nine. Um, and that may have an impact on uh, trades. If you're looking at someone to play immediately, it's not going to happen. But if you're taking the long view, then you can have a guy who's not ready to play for a week. I think the uh, $175 million 2021 salary cap floor is going to also impact uh, the remainder of what happens with the uh, trading period. The teams are, aren't going to be making, I think, the big blockbuster trades uh, like you had last year with Jalen Ramsey uh, going to the Rams and the Jaguars for two first and a fourth. The guy that you knew you were going to have to pay a contract uh, the following year. If you didn't do it immediately, if the cap's at $175 million next year or close to it, I don't see any scenario where the cap is at the current $198.2 million level, then are you really looking to add on a big contract um, or what's going to be a big contract somebody's going to have to pay? I think that's going to have an impact as well. Now, the mechanics how trades work. Um, in the NFL, uh, you have to have cap room to acquire a player. So if you don't have cap room, it's going to be very hard for you to take on a salary. And what you're taking on when you trade for someone is the remainder of their contract. And for what's the uh, most immediate concern is what are they making this year? So you'd be acquiring nine-seventeenths of their base salary plus the prorated portion of any per-game roster bonuses. So they had... They played eight games, then you got the remaining eight games for, like, per-game active roster bonuses. So that's going to impact who goes where um, as well. Uh, What you can do if you don't have cap room is what uh, Seattle did when they acquired Dwayne Brown, I think it was in 2017, that they couldn't fit a salary in. So went to Russell Wilson, had him um, restructure his contract and create uh, some cap room. where they converted base salary into signing bonus, pushed the cap obligations out in the future, and that got and they had enough to fit um, Dwayne Brown in between what their existing cap room and the newly created cap room. Or um, you could do what the Houston Texans did last year when they were trading um, J. Van Clowney to the Seahawks. Um, Seattle couldn't fit the $15 million that um, Clowney was going to make into their cap. So Houston converted some of the money into signing bonus on the way out. So they ate $7 million worth of salary. So the only thing um, Seattle took on was $8 million worth of, uh, of salary. So that's another way you could see a, a team that's kind of uh, capped out um, or has a tight cap situation. Try to make a trade uh, fit somebody in. It's going to have to be some of those things. Obviously, you can cut players as well and, and pick up cap room, presumably. 
But who's got the cap room to be players if they want to? Well, you got the Cleveland Browns that have the most cap room in the league. Um, they've got $31.429 million according to NFLPA data. Um, then you got some other teams who are over $20 million that just aren't going to be looking to bring people on. Jaguars, rebuilding mode. They got 26-6. I don't expect them to be acquiring people. New York Jets have $27.681 million. They're probably going to be sellers instead of buyers. Dallas, uh, they got $23.6 million of cap room. Season's been a disappointment for them, and particularly uh, quarterbacks in disarray. I don't really see them being a team which is going to be uh, looking to acquire a bunch of players. Uh, Philadelphia is always very active to trading deadline. Uh, banged up team, uh, weak division. Howie Roseman always makes trades. They have $23.191 million. The Washington football team, $23.458 million. Can't see them really being in the uh, acquiring market. Uh, Denver's got $20 million in cap room, but they're not very good. Uh, the Patriots are intriguing. They're usually a team that makes a lot of trades. Um, if they lose today, <laughs> uh, that's going to make it even more difficult for them to uh, continue their dominance in the AFC East. They've got $22.995 million. Now, who is going to have a difficult time absorbing someone? San Francisco uh, could use another pass rusher, but they have less than $200,000 worth of cap room. Uh, that's going to be tough. Seattle, before the Carlos Dunlap trade, had $1.3 million in cap room. The defense is terrible. <laughs> um, it used to be known as the Legion of Boom. I call it the Legion of Doom because that defense is going to doom any chance they have to uh, win a Super Bowl. They could still use another pass rusher, could use help in the secondary, <laughs> but that's going to be hard for them to make a trade unless it's player for player, player for player. That would be their best route. Buffalo has 4.81 million in cap room. These are all teams that are under 5 million. Um, the Panthers, 4.668 million. Tampa Bay, 4.5 million. And that's not factoring in Antonio Brown. Uh, the Ravens, 2.85 million. Can still use some, some help, uh, particularly at receiver, but we'll see how that works out. And Atlanta, they're not, they're not going to be looking to uh, bring anybody in through trade. They got 1.91 million. Now, the teams that could be, could be buyers, I've mentioned two of them already, uh, Philadelphia and the Patriots. Green Bay really could use some sort of wide receiver help. Um, they give Aaron Rodgers another weapon. They didn't get one in the draft. Uh, the Titans, uh, if they want to try to get back to the AFC Championship or or better, they lost their left tackle, Taylor Lewan. Uh Pass rusher, Javon Clowney's not getting to the quarterback the way they expected. Um, Vic Beasley as well. Need a pass rusher. Pittsburgh uh, lost Devin Bush. Could use an inside linebacker. Teams that could be in sell mode. The Bengals typically don't sell, but they've already uh, shipped Carlos Dunlop out the door. Um, that could be a team to look at. The Giants, 1-6. and six, uh, Rebuilding mode. Season went down to drain when Saquon Barkley tore his knee up. Uh, that could be a team to look at. Um, Houston Texans don't have a first or second round pick next year thanks to the Laramie Tunsil trade. Uh, they got multiple receivers. Maybe they could sell some, uh, one of those. The Vikings are already kind of in sell mode. Uh, they have surplus safeties. I don't know how for a team that was supposed to be a contender this year but has been an extreme disappointment. I don't know how they're going to have, have two high price uh, safeties long term. They've got uh, 185 million in cap commitments next year. Harrison Smith or Anthony Harris. Harris is on the franchise tag. Um, so uh, those would be some teams I might look at um, that uh, would be buyers and sellers. Um, guys who aren't going anywhere, two Falcons in particular, um, Julio Jones and Matt Ryan. The Falcons aren't in fire sell mode. If they knew how to close out games, they might be 5-3. and three. Um, instead of a two-win team. You're not going to trade Matt Ryan. Um, one not going to be in position most likely to get Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. They're not ready to admit that they need to blow everything up. But if you trade Matt Ryan, you don't get you get minimal cap relief this year because he already has his base salary down to his league minimum uh, from the contract restructures. And then you're going to add to next year's cap. 
because you're going to have $44,437,500 in dead money when his cap number right now is $40,912,500. Now, Julio Jones is another guy. You pick up close to $6 million in cap room by trading him, but the cap number versus dead, 2021 cap number versus the dead, dead money is basically a wash. $23.05 million versus $23.25 million. So you're not going to see him go anywhere. A.J. Green, you're not going to see anyone acquire him. One, he's not the player he used to be. But you'd have to have $9.5 million worth of cap room to absorb his franchise tag number. So I don't see that happening. Ryan Kerrigan is a guy, uh, if another Ed Rusher, Ed Rusher is going to go from the Washington football team, he's, his base size is 11-5 this year. And he's got $250,000 in per game roster bonuses. So you're going to need about six point two five million dollars of cap room just to acquire him uh that's going to be tough and jj watt (laughs) um he's not going to go anywhere either uh for a couple of reasons one you need 8.2 million of cap room to take on his base salary but what type of compensation are you going to give up for jj watt has it been healthy um most years uh not quite the player he was before he's on the wrong side of 30 17.5 million dollar base salary or or worth of compensation next year do you want to add that in and then would houston get value for him that they really want to trade they probably be looking to get a first round pick at least recoup a second round pick and probably want a second round pick and more so um i don't think you're going to see see him go um um either um but I don't, it's going to be a year where you're going to see probably for the rest of the trading deadline some minor trades. Probably not going to see any type of monumental blockbuster trade, uh, I think, primarily because of the pandemic. And plus, you got some of these teams that have cap room. They're going to be thinking, okay, um, cap's going down. Let's try to be players in free agency. Maybe we can get some bargains if the tight cap situation is going to create money not being there the way it usually is, and guys panic, then you can get a guy for a price you wouldn't get him in a normal year. Support for this podcast comes from Microsoft Teams. Now there are more ways to be a team with Microsoft Teams. Bring everyone together in one space with a new virtual room. Collaborate live, drawing, sharing, and building ideas with everyone on the same page. And make sure more of your team is seen and heard with up to 49 people on screen at once. Learn more about all the newest Teams features at Microsoft.com slash Teams. One intriguing big name to keep an eye on is the reigning NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Patriots cornerback uh, Stephon Gilmore. Um, he's out this week. He was questioned on the injury report uh, with some sort of minor knee injury. Uh, but if the Patriots drop to 2-5, and five, then who knows, maybe Belichick, uh, decides to try to move him because Belichick has a motto. At least there's something called the Patriot Way, and to most people that means do your job and that type of stuff. Um, but to me, it means under Belichick's reign, for the exception of Tom Brady, it's better to get rid of a player a year too early as opposed to a year too late. Um, they did that. Richard Seymour got a first round pick in 2011. Um, I don't think you can get a first round pick for a 30 year old corner. Um, who isn't playing as well as he did last year, even though it's going to be hard to stay at that high standard. He was Defensive Player of the Year. Um, He's under contract through 2021, but will want a new contract. Um, It's affordable next year because his salary is a little less than $8 million. You would need basically almost $8.3 million of cap room to acquire him because he's got the remainder of his base salary is just under six nine, and the per game roster bonus is one hundred fifty six thousand two hundred fifty dollars per game, um, would equate to a little over one point four million. So that right there uh, would make it kind of difficult um, for teams to absorb him. Even though the Raiders are a team which could use a cornerback, Lions, there's that history, the uh, Patriots history, Bob Quinn. Um, Tennessee hasn't adequately replaced the Logan Ryan. They could use another corner um, as well. Someone gives Belichick a second-round pick and maybe another pick. Would that do it to move Gilmore? Um, They were rumored to try to to 
looking to shop him um, during the off season. So that's the that's one big name I'd keep an eye on. Support for this podcast comes from AT and T. All right, so to stay connected, AT and T Business has the only wireless plan your teams need. With mobile hotspot data up to 100 gigabytes, they can easily use their phones to connect tablets and laptops to the internet from really virtually wherever work takes them, giving them the power to boost productivity even on the go. Upgrade to AT&T Business and get our best plan with nationwide 5G and 100 gigabytes in mobile hotspot data. Visit att.com slash business elite. Terms and conditions apply. Um, To me, Riley Reef, since Minnesota's in um, fire sale mode, Titans lost Taylor Lewan, maybe left tackle. Um, goes to Minnesota there for a fifth-round pick, something like that. The Jets, I didn't mention them earlier in the sellers, but they are sellers. Um, they're horrible. They're, they're going to most likely end up with Trevor Lawrence, or the rights to Trevor Lawrence next year. Uh, Philadelphia could really use an upgrade at linebacker. The linebackers have been kind of shaky for the most part this year. Avery Williamson would be an upgrade there <laughs> compared to what they have. With the Jets, the Jets outside, Jets inside linebacker, and Steelers are looking for a stopgap uh, for losing Devin Bush. Uh, Williamson's in a contract year, so that might be a guy um, to think about. You only need you only need like 1.875 million cap room to fit him in. So now, if New England wins and they're three and four, they beat Buffalo today, then. Maybe Belichick is typical. I'm going to try to acquire some talent and make a run to continue my dominance of the reign of the uh, AFC East. They really need to get some help for Cam Newton, whoever is ultimately the quarterback, uh, in terms of some weapons. That's one of the reasons why Tom Brady's not there anymore. The weapons were terrible. Um, He decided to go someplace where he has more weapons than he's ever had in his, his career. But they really need somebody to stretch the field. And you got some some options you can go there. Um, Houston's got multiple receivers. Um, Kenny Stills, contract year, uh, would need about 3.7. He's a deep threat. Will Fuller, contract year, fifth year option. You need about 5.4 to acquire him. If you want an ultimate speedster, uh, John Ross, once out of Cincinnati, um, falling out of favor there, has never career's never really taken off. You need. Basically, 2.8 million. This isn't going to be like Muhammad Sanu last year. They give a second round pick to get somebody. <laughs> um, probably looking at a fifth, sixth round pick if they're going to get a receiver. Also, Golden Tate. Giants, I'm sure, wouldn't mind getting rid of him. Um, it, you need about 4.2 million in cap room uh, to absorb his contract. Um, and he's got two more years after that at 8.5 million and $6 million. That might be another guy to consider. Belichick used to want to run the two tight end set, um, relied heavily on tight ends. Uh, they don't really have anyone who stepped up. They're supposedly on Devin Asiati, but he was inactive last week, so I don't know. The third round pick this year. You got a couple of tight ends that could be uh, available. You know, David Njoku, want, he's wanted out of Cleveland. He's the third tight end when everybody's healthy. Harrison Bryant has looked promising. Um, their draft pick this year. And Austin Hooper should be back from the appendectomy probably next, uh, for their next game. In Joku, you need $1.8 million basically a cap room to acquire him. Got a fifth-year option, which is $6.013 million that you could get a look-see. It's guaranteed for injury. If you don't like what you see, then, hey, you cut bait with him, he's free. Maybe that's some sort of conditional pick someplace where it's conditional like fifth and then if you exercise the option it goes to a fourth or maybe it's a sixth goes to fifth something like that evan ingram giants another guy same draft class first round pick you need slightly over 19 1.925 million same fifth year option i mean um excuse me i got those two wrong in joku those are the actual actual salaries for Njoku, you'd need basically nine hundred fifty thousand dollars to uh, fit him in this year that's the prorated amount and for Evan Ingram, you need a little over a million. That's a prorated amount. They both have the fifth-year option, so the same principle applies on the fifth-year option with those guys. That you get a look-see, and if you didn't like it, uh, you cut bait. Seattle has one too many tight ends. Um, Kobe Parkinson's coming off NF5 from the foot injury, but they've got Will Disley, the blocking tight end they drafted a couple of years ago, Greg Olson, and Parkinson, Jacob Hollister. That's four tight ends. Hollister. 
is a guy he's playing on a second round RFA tender for 3.259 million. You need basically 1.725 million to acquire him. That's another tight end option as well. Houston may look to try to move um, Duke Johnson because uh, they seem to be all in on David Johnson uh, to try to recoup more draft picks. Uh, maybe the Bears, whose running game is kind of um, anemic this year, um, might be a guy else who's in the passing game. You need about $2.1 million um, for him, and he's under under contract next year for $5.15 million. Uh, to fit him into your cap. Uh, so that might be uh, another option. If if um, interior linemen are going to go, might be Kevin Zeitler. Giants might look to move on from him. Uh, you'd need basically $5.3 million uh, to absorb his contract. But I don't think you're going to see, if the exception maybe Gilmore, blockbuster guys. One guy that <laughs> the Eagles would love to get rid of, I can't see anyone acquiring is Alshon Jeffrey, not because of contract, because he hadn't played this year. He's had the list Frank injury, was banged up last year. Why are you going to – I wouldn't – I think he's probably – he would be wishful thinking for Philadelphia to think that Alshon Jeffrey is going to get traded. And I'd have to question the judgment of uh, whoever was going to acquire Alshon Jeffrey unless he reworks his contract and the Eagles would want to uh, eat a significant part of the salary is getting off the books, and you're not giving up much from a draft pick standpoint. That might be the only way. Melvin Ingram um, isn't going to be back in L.A. most likely after paying jo- Joey Bosa, making him the highest paid defensive player in NFL history. You'd need 7-4 uh, to acquire him, so I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, they'll get the compensatory pick for him in 2022, presumably a third-round pick that he'll go out and sign up big enough contract and have enough net losses, gains, losses for agency to work out in their favor, but we'll see. But anyway, that'll wrap up uh, this week's edition of Inside the Cap. Uh, looking at the upcoming trade trading deadline, which is this Tuesday, uh, November 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And one thing to remember that once the trading deadline passes, that every player is subject to waivers. Right now, um, players who have four credited seasons for pension and benefit purposes aren't subject to waivers. After the trading deadline, everyone is subject to waivers. Okay, well, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for listening. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Corey Joel, C-O-R-R-Y-J-O-E-L, and read my uh, work at CBSSports.com, my agent's take column. We'll see you back here next week. Goodbye. Thank you.